Uh, can I ask you how old you are? Sure, I'm 70. Um, were you the head of the Mideast Bureau? When I'm you sorry. The paper? Were you the head of the Mideast Bureau or were you just part of the Middle East No, I was Bureau? chief of the uh, Boston Globe Middle East Bureau. Okay. I, I lived in Jerusalem. Okay. Um, that was in the 80s. I was there for about four years. Um, number of books sold? I don't know. It's in the sixth printing, whatever that translates to. Okay. I, I don't know. Uh, <coughs> you know, Johnny Evans can yeah. tell you it's so very well there, and mm -hmm. it's so very well in Mississippi. You know, if it sold as well elsewhere, I'd be uh, a wealthy, happy man. But uh, uh, it's you know. It's the greatest interest has naturally been in Mississippi. It's been a big, big seller in Mississippi. It's, uh, I think the publisher's happy with how it continues still selling, which is rare that a book has been out. Oh, of course, the help has been, been on the bestseller list for two years, but uh, uh, usually a you know, book kind of loses is its flavor after a couple of months. My first two books uh, didn't get beyond the first printing. Mm -hmm. This one's in the sixth printing. Mm -hmm. Maybe beyond that now. I haven't talked to the publisher in a couple of weeks. John told me six. I actually visited with John earlier this week. He was nice to talk to. Um, so political machine in Mississippi. What do you think about Mississippi politicians? And they, they tend to do really successfully, I guess, nationwide. There's a, we've always got somebody, it seems, from Mississippi who's been in Congress forever, who's got a lot yeah, of Yeah, that's part of the reason that Mississippi has had disproportionate power in Washington, that the people we send there tend to stay there for many years and acquire seniority and therefore a lot of power. Uh, you know, Thad Cochran is, uh, uh, Thad is very quiet and not demonstrative, but he's, uh, he's a very powerful figure in Washington. You don't read about him in the paper a great deal, but uh, he's uh, off and on been chairman of the Appropriations Committee, and uh, which is, you know, arguably one of the second or third most powerful positions in the United States Senate. Trent Locke was Senate Majority Leader. Uh, you know, people like the congressmen like Sonny Montgomery and Jamie Whitten had acquired a lot of seniority and became very powerful uh, in the areas that they specialized in. And uh, uh, obviously Senator Eastland and Senator Stennis were there for seems like for about 40 years, both of them, and uh, became chairman of a very powerful committee. So uh, 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 you know, because you know, our, our representatives or our senators have been able to be reelected again and again, they, uh, they uh, just naturally accumulate a great deal of power. Any recent theories on why they do so well? Is it just southern southern charm or manners, or easier? You to mean in Mississippi or Washington? I'd say just the way. Yeah, well, both. I mean, how do they keep getting reelected? Well, you know, how do they do well once they get there? I think you know that clearly. You know, to be successful in reelections, you have to relate to the people you represent, and they probably do a pretty good job of. Uh, relating to the interest of the people in Mississippi, or else they wouldn't be reelected. Uh, uh, in Washington, you know, somebody like Thad, who I've known Thad for more than 60 years, I and mean, we were kids who lived on the Ole Miss campus together when our parents were getting their master's degrees uh, right after World War II, and uh, Thad is, is very easy to get along with. There's uh, uh, 
not any kind of real edge to to Thad, and and I think he, as a result, he's almost universally popular in Washington. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes Thad. He, he, Democrats like Thad. Mm -hmm. uh, just easy going. So maybe that's part of that's your kind of southern nature that you're not as high strung as somebody from New York. Mm 